Hey there, little kitty. So, have you decided what you're going to be for the horror fancy dress party? A mummy, huh? Excellent choice. Well, don't you worry. I'm here to help by unraveling the mystery of how mummies were made. Zoom in! In ancient Egypt, death wasn't seen as the end. It was the beginning of a challenging journey to the afterlife. To make it through this eternal voyage, the soul needed the body to remain intact. But keeping a body in perfect condition after death, that was no easy feat. Why? Because the moment a person dies, the body's own enzymes, which had once worked to repair and renew cells, turn against it. They begin breaking everything down. At the same time, bacteria in the stomach and intestines spread rapidly, turning the abdomen into a battlefield of decay. So for ancient Egyptians, preserving the body became a tricky race against time. That's why they relied on skilled priests known as mummy fires, experts in the art of turning the dead into immortal travelers. The first challenge they tackled was the brain. Surprisingly, Egyptians believed the brain wasn't important. So the priests removed it by putting a long metal hook through the nostrils, carefully breaking apart the soft tissue. Once the brain was liquefied, they drained it out and filled the now empty skull with tree resin, a natural preservative. The next enemies of preservation were the abdominal organs, stomach, intestines, liver and lungs. These organs are packed with bacteria and digestive enzymes that could destroy the body from the inside out. To stop this, priests made a small incision on the left side of the torso, removing each organ with care. Once cleaned, the organs were placed into canopic jars Special containers decorated with carvings of protective deities believed to safeguard their contents. But the heart was different. Egyptians saw it as the most important organ, the seat of the soul. They believed the heart would be weighed in the afterlife against the feather of Maat, the goddess of truth. If it was lighter than the feather, the soul could enter paradise, known as the field of reeds. For this reason, the heart was treated with great reverence, sometimes left in the body, other times replaced with a symbolic heart-shaped amulet. With the organs removed, the next step was preserving the body itself. This is where natron a naturally occurring salt became the hero of the process. The priests packed the body's empty cavity with natron and covered the entire corpse in it. Over 35 days, the salt absorbed all the moisture from the body, leaving behind a dry leather-like shell that was resistant to decay. But a dried-out corpse wasn't enough to impress the gods or the living. The body was then cleaned and coated in fragrant tree resin to seal it and cover any unpleasant smells. Priests massaged the skin with cedar oil to soften it before wrapping the entire body in fine linen. Each layer of wrapping was carefully done with prayers and small amulets placed between folds for protection in the afterlife. Finally, the mummy was placed in a series of beautifully decorated coffins for the wealthiest individuals 
This ended with a stone sarcophagus laid to rest in a tomb alongside treasures, food and offerings for the journey to eternity. Trivia time! Did you know to wrap a mummy, the Egyptians used hundreds of yards of linen strips, sometimes up to 375 yards. Yes, that's as long as three football fields. Sketching time! Today's sketch of the day goes to Kavya Yole. Hope you learned something eternal today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. All set to be mummified, kitty. Kitty? Oh, looks like she thought it was for real. Well, never mind.